This is Twit. 888-826-5537 or 8888-ASK-LEO. Ron is next from Mountain View down by Google, down Google Way. Hi, Ron. Hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. I got a Nexus 5X for my 13-year-old granddaughter. Perfect choice. And it's, um, it's set up on Project Phi, and it worked working pretty well. Very good choice. Now her parents want me to set up parental controls for limiting screen time and preventing access to bad apps and websites. Oh. Also limit things like YouTube so that she can only see appropriate vid videos and music. Um, so I was wondering what parental control app you recommend for Android. Uh, well, have you tried the built-in settings? You mean the multi-user thing? Uh, that would be one, and then um, there's uh, the Google That's Play. I've kind of got a lot of uh, a lot of it's limited work huh? to do because yeah. every time she wants to add an app, you have to approve it. Yeah, yeah. Use It'd a be pin. Nice if you, someone did the work for me. Yeah, uh, for a lot of parents, that's the main one is to keep them from buying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to like restrict her access, probably the oh, this is an interesting question. At, at home, it's easy to do; you do it at the router. Um, but of right, course, but as, she, as soon as you turn off Wi-Fi, she can access anything she wants, right? Right, and she takes the phone to school and stuff. Yeah. So Google, I would get. I still would use the the Google solutions to the degree you can. Google has something I haven't tried it called. Family Link. At least they announced it. I, I think it's out. Yeah, but it's it's limited so that you can only use it for kids that are less than thirteen, or you have to lie about their age. Well, I would lie about <laughs> I would lie about her age. Uh, that's interesting. I wonder why Google says only. You know, obviously the the cutoff of thirteen has to do with the Child Online Protection and Privacy Act or COPPA, which says yeah. that. Children 13 and younger have uh, stricter protections, as they should, for privacy. Um, but, you know, is there some reason they, you don't want to say, well, she's 11? Well, I guess there's no good reason. Yeah, I mean, she may not like it. <laughs> I know how, how age is important for... Uh, but, for... It's, you know, you have to set it in her Google profile. So right. It's going to affect everything. She oh, does. yeah, it'll keep her off YouTube. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of Google's p point, right, is... Well, uh, Google has um, age limitations on on each video, apparently. Yeah, and I think that's their point, is, well, if you want to limit it on the phone, why wouldn't you want to limit it on, uh, on YouTube in general? All right. Yeah. I don't... Uh, okay, so... Uh, I found one app that's called Screen Time. Oh, that's interesting. And it it limits screen time, but it doesn't do anything about um, you know bad web bad apps and bad websites and stuff like that. Yeah, um, you know I'm not an expert on uh, this, but uh, I w I will put a link in the show notes to a uh, article. It's a little it's a year old from a from um, PC Magazine, though, they're quite reliable on a variety of choices. Norton has one. There's one that has been around for years called Net Nanny, uh, but that's a subscription. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to this because this – oh, actually, they do have one updated for 2017. They have one of those charts. Um, their editor's choice is Content Watch Net Nanny 7, Symantec Norton Family Premiere, and custodian with a Q Q U O Q U S T O D I O. Uh, those are the three editors' choice uh, from PC Magazine. Um, but there are others as well. Disney, you know what? An interesting one that's a hardware device is Disney's Circle. But yeah, again, that's quite it's expensive. Though. Yeah, and as soon as she goes to school, own. it doesn't protect her at all. So right. this is more for in in house uh, protection. I would look at uh, Net Nanny, which has been around forever. It's forty dollars. That's not horribly expensive. Uh, the Norton's a little more expensive, um, and uh, and even more so Custodio. But uh, Net Nanny has been around for an awfully long time, and I think it'll do all those things you describe. Okay, thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm not again. I'm not an expert. I haven't. My kids are old enough. I don't uh, have to worry about that. Um, but um, 
And I was always, I have to say, as a, a parent, I was always nervous about this kind of thing because uh, it incents kids to get around it, frankly. But I did, my kids, when they were younger, didn't have the cell phone loophole, and that's the real problem. I was able to do this on the router at home. So with their laptops and their desktops, they, I could control it. In fact, I still do that for our 14-year-old. So at 10 p.m., for instance, his Internet goes out. Mine continues. But his goes off because he's got to go to bed. And if, he, if I don't do that, he will never go to bed. He'll stay. And he's done it. He'll stay up all night. The problem is this cell phone loophole. And I'm kind of grateful I didn't have to worry about it with, uh, with my older kids because uh, they didn't have one. But even if you've got no Wi-Fi access, Michael, our 14-year-old, he can bring his cell phone to bed and he can play on the cell phone all night because it, you know, he's got his access to his cell carrier. So, uh, you know, what we do is say, you know, give me the phone. Good night. <laughs> That's the only thing. You, give me your iPad. Give me your phone. Give me your watch. Give me whatever you got. Good night. <laughs> That's the only thing you can do. Uh, in general, I think it's best to, uh, with really little kids, of course you want to do this, but as a kid gets older, you really more important you have the conversation with them because they're going to go to friends' houses. There's always going to be a loophole. And it's really important to say, you know, you're going to see stuff uh, online that might make you uncomfortable, might make you wonder what's going on. I want you to, if that happens, please uh, talk to me about it. You want to kind of keep those lines of communication open. You want to have some rules. We actually have a contract with Michael about what he can and cannot do online. Um, and, and have those explicit rules and have him sign it and agree to it. Those kinds of things I think are very valuable and more valuable than just kind of a mechanical blocking. Uh, a, because they can get around mechanical blocking. And B, because it, it lets you avoid the conversation, which is really the most important part is that communication. Talking about what they might see online. And I'm not just talking about sex. There's hate. There's some, there's, you know, racism. There's vile stuff online. And it's almost inevitable they'll run across it. And so even if you're block, blocking it is just, you know, it gives you a false sense of security. Oh, they can't see anything now. No, they'll, believe me, they'll see stuff. You got you to talk to them and, and, and really get it to the point where they can say, hey, I saw something that bothered me today and, uh, and talk about it. And it can actually be, as they used to say in school, a teaching moment, a teachable moment. <laughs>